Well, so first of all, thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight. We are really excited. Uh, we have uh, one of my really good friends, uh, one of my uh, colleagues at my right hand, uh, Michelle Holt. Thank you so much for being here today. Of course, thank you. Uh, we're really Honestly, excited to have you. One of the biggest Doc Talkers. We had, You're we had always involved, and I love that for. She's you. a big supporter of Doc Talk, and we had uh, Ashley Steven on our, on the show also, uh, and. Uh, well, we we'll were really excited. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just bring the whole family. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, I know you very well, uh, yep. but I'd like you. Know, I, I want you to introduce yourself to all of our followers, our listeners, um, and kind of just tell us about yourself. Sure. So, um, so I'm Michelle. I work directly with Dr. AJ. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in healthcare Sorry. for a long time, <laughs> uh, about 16, 17 years now. Oh my God! Really? Yeah. So That's I was in, I was a nurse time. for a long time before I went back to school. So. Um, half of that was cardiac nursing, half of that was in the ER, um, and now here I am in primary care. So, nice. yeah. That's a big change, though, huh? Like, it was a big change. To primary care. Huge change. I, I feel like people make it like such a negative thing. It's so boring. It's so this. It's what you make it. Like, yeah. It really you, you is. You do procedures, right? You it, do a lot of fun things. It's what you're comfortable with, too, right? Like, I mean, I have a lot of nurse practitioners that are really not comfortable with procedures, for example, right? And Michelle does all types of procedures. And awesome. she's very comfortable with joint injections and biopsies and stuff like that. And, and that's something that I think is very handy, especially as a nurse practitioner. Even primary care doctors. The majority of them don't do procedures in the office. They don't right? want to take a risk. They don't want to They're take a risk. Worried. But I mean, I feel like the risk, if it's not vascular, it's really not that invasive, right? And it'll, you save a lot of money. You have to learn somehow. You have to. At the end of the day, you have to learn. Yeah. And, and patients nowadays are really tired of going to specialists. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like, I don't want to go to dermatology, this person, yeah, this cardiology. person. Just do it for me, man. Exactly. Like, it's a one-stop shop. It make it a lot easier. And but, if you don't like him... My office is always open to you. you know? He's just upset because he lost his nurse practitioner. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, anytime yeah. you want to Understandable. come, I'm more than happy to have you. Yep. You're not, that, that's actually. not going to happen. That's not going to happen. <laughs> anyway, um, so you're just such an ass sometimes, bro. I'm sorry, bro. I didn't mean to, but no, most people bro. don't want to. You wanna... meant to. What do you mean you didn't mean to? But like most people don't want to work with you. So I figured if they're, if, if they're going to leave you anyway, then they might as well come with me. Who's the one without a nurse practitioner right now? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused. Okay, I'll take that. Anyway, I got you. All right. So it's, it's about Michelle today. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> So um, primary care, you jumped into, I mean, from an ER nurse, trauma, cardiac nurse. Um, why? Why did you? Why medicine? Yeah. Why medicine? Why did you choose this route? And I mean, what, what do you like about it? What do you hate about it? Um, so I can't say that I hate too much about it yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, sure. Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, being in the emergency room, a lot of the time, especially at the end of my career, I was in triage a lot. And when you're in triage, you have to be very sharp of f like figuring out right away, okay, what do I think is going on with this patient? And at the hospital that I was in uh, most of my career, you could initiate some protocol. Yeah. So I'm figuring out what's wrong with this patient. I'm figuring out essentially how do I think this is going to be managed. So eventually I'm like, I'm thinking like a provider. Yeah. So why not figure out how to be a provider? Yeah. Um, so that kind of is That's what led cool. me in the direction. It became like a game for me, actually. Yeah. So I would triage my patient and then I would kind of follow their chart to see like, was I right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, that's awesome. So I love that, that was, that was kind of like what led me into going back to school besides the fact that my husband talked me into it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can see that. I can see and that. I like that you always want to learn yeah. and you're always like, I want to know as much as possible. I want to get as much information as possible. And that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> that's what yeah. Steven did when, when, when he was rotating with me. He, I was so pissed at him all the time because he's always like, why? Can you tell me why? But why? Yeah. But you know what? That, why I, is the best realized, question ever? It is the best question yeah. because he wanted to know exactly why. And he wanted to understand that literally the pathophysiology behind every single thing. But you know what? That's what makes you a better provider. That's what makes you a good provider. And remember, we're saving lives here. We're not changing tires on a car and uh, you know doing oil changes. Right. But uh, what's I've always wanted to ask you this. What is the craziest thing you've seen in the ER? Like the craziest you know, that's a really hard question because it just depends on your definition of crazy. Um, that probably would have been a, a question for Steven given his uh, longer history and trauma. Um, but to me, it was just the weird things that I saw. Like we had a patient that came in all the time. Um, she was a regular because she liked to eat nails. Nails? Um, like, yes. Like like or any type of ob toenails? Uh, oh like, no, like, like like actual nails, like actual nails, metal objects, um, no, no. and she did it, it all the time. Oh, yeah, so so yeah, every time that sounds like an episode of House. Honestly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So she became you know like a, a regular that we got to know. 
Um, then, you know, it was always the game of like, what did this person stick in their butt? Yeah. Um, oh, you know? I was just going to so, tell you, what's the ER <laughs> there, right? ever? Yeah. I had a guy that took a big Coke bottle and, and it- A glass? Because the sphincter, yeah, the sphincter was so tight and he like was playing with it and it sucked it in. And so when we did an x-ray, it was a big Coke bottle in there. Yep. That's insane. And when I went to go interview him, I was just wanted to ask him why so bad. I'm like, <laughs> hey man, why? He was yeah. like, look man, you know- it's 2020 and you know, like I just want to try something new. So I played with the, you know, a little bit and it, <laughs> it sucked it all up. Yep. It's kind of crazy, bro. The, the stuff that they actually insert into your rectum. But why do you think they even want to insert something in their rectum? Bro, it's I a sensation. You would know you know? what, 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 why would I know? I don't know. It seems like you would do something like that. Really? You yeah. think so? Is it like, is, like, it, a, like is, a, it, is it the look? What is it? Like, why, why would you assume that I'll, I'll be liking that kind of stuff? I don't know. You're my brother. I know what you like. So, so what do I like, MJ? It just if, I, if you were to present to the ER, uh -huh. I would think that that would be the one thing that you would do. Literally, the first thing you think is that I put something up my rectum. Yeah, because wow. you're full of shit. No, I'm just joking. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm full of shit. How do I react? The problem is I can't take him seriously with that fake ass mustache. Something because that's, that's not normal. Oh, you that's, wish you had this mustache, bro. Okay, this if you did it properly, if that was see that one's kind of done properly but the other one is just it needs some gel or yeah, something yeah i rushed it today bro you, oh you rushed it yeah yeah exactly anyway, fake we're not gonna fight sorry i'm yeah, sorry yeah. we deal with this every day yep yeah yep. so and we kind of asked this to your husband about like why you switched from nursing to nurse practitioner was it you were just bored of school like were you bored of the hospital and switched over what is it that made you switch i feel like everybody has a story you know from being a nurse to a nurse practitioner what made you switch I mean, I definitely started to get burnt out from bedside nursing and it was really hard for me because I did start in nursing so long ago. I've seen how it has evolved and changed, um, yeah. in my opinion, for the worst, especially with the hospitals and healthcare in general. I feel like everything now is based on a survey yeah, um, rather than absolutely. what you're actually doing. It's all customer service based and that has kind of destroyed, I think, the industry for a lot of nurses and for me. So I started to burn out, um, but like I said, I just uh, very much wanted to learn more about the pathophysiology behind all of medicine. So it just became, uh, I just became more curious about the management of care. So that kind of led me into that yeah. direction. Was there any uh, specialist that you had to call middle of the night, cussed you out? Because I feel like every nurse has that story. I was, you know, enjoying it, and then I had to call the neurosurgeon. He cussed me out. And I said, "I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> it's like I'm done. I'm done nursing. I'm going to be a nurse practitioner and go outpatient." Kind of like she what probably you has did. tons of the stories like that. I mean, I yeah, there, there's definitely some. There were some tough interactions with doctors at times. Um, nothing that crazy, um, but uh, I did have one in particular rough interaction once with a neurologist because um, it was in the middle of the night. Um, and he did not like that. So, but to be honest with you, the next day his, his colleague came in and he, I talked to him about what happened and he was like complete, you know, that should have never happened. I'm so sorry this happened to you. So it, you just got to learn how to brush it off though, as a nurse, um, and dish it back. By sometimes. the way, it happens so, to us too. Even yes. as residents. No, I, residents, I have seen I've that. gotten chewed up by, yeah, those yeah. Times. honestly, yeah. they're always either neurosurgeons or cardiothoracic surgeons. Those yeah. two people some yeah. reason are yeah. always angry they're angry people bro. they really are uh, i think surgeons yeah. i have a couple friends angry. that are that I, yeah. i'm not talking about you but i'm just saying in general yeah, yeah. 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 I, i've seen some doctors uh get an earful on the er from consults as too so i i know that it does happen to other people you just have to learn how to brush it off or yeah. or dish it back a little so <laughs> is there is there uh, i mean i've always known i've known you for a while now and you have that kind of go-getter mentality where you want to kind of do more learn more is this kind of where you see yourself or what does the future look for you? Like, what is, what is your, what, do you have any goals or anything that you really want to do as being a nurse practitioner? Do you want, really want to do primary care the rest of your life? Or do you like cosmetics? Do you like, would you consider opening up your own practice? What is, what, what are you thinking? And yeah. answer this uh, very carefully because remember. Yeah. 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 I'm like, why would so, you ask it? Is that like a setup? That was a, such a setup. Yeah, it's one hundred percent. I need to see. What are you planning in the future? Yeah, are you exactly. gonna leave me? Are you exactly. gonna do this? And it's like yeah, and he set it up exactly everything you like. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I need him to sign a paper real quick that he's not gonna yes. fire yeah. me. I'm not, I'm not. Um, There's a non compete. Yes. But, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah, no. I think that kind of doing a hodgepodge of all those things is um a good idea in the future, if possible being somebody's primary care, being able to offer them telehealth whenever they want, um, kind of like a concierge medicine type of thing would be really interesting in the future. 
obviously aesthetics are really big right now. So being able to offer that um, to people would be really cool as well. And then just being able to make house calls and maybe like pediatric patients where it's really difficult, especially for like a mom that has five kids at home to be yeah. able to have a sick kid at home and then have to take one to the doctor as a pain take in the, the butt. Whole, yeah, whole family yeah so like, to be able to like offer them a, a home care type of thing is yeah. uh, kind of ideal, um, I think so. I wanted to ask you, I do feel like medicine in general, there's much less people going into medicine, med schools, um, nursing schools. Why do you think that the medical field is taking a turn and kind of like people are just not as interested in it? I, I do feel like what yeah. kind of advice would you give, you know, before we finish this podcast, what kind of advice would you give to a lot of these young nurses that are in school right now and want to transition to become a nurse practitioner? If you could give them a piece of advice, what would it be? Uh, just, just make sure that you're going into it for the right reason and understand that while your nursing background gives you a good foundation, it is absolutely not the same job. Um, you are now the provider. So everything is on you. So I think that a lot of nurses just think, Oh, you know, I'm just going to go on to school and it's all going to be the same. It is not the same. Um, you know, when I left my shift as a nurse, I passed on that patient to the next person and they took care of that person. But now I go to bed at night and I'm like, did I do the right thing for that person? You know, you think about it and it's all on you. So it it truly is just different. So you have to make sure that you really, really understand the position, you know? So if it's something that you're thinking about, I think that you really should consider shadowing one and making sure that you really understand the actual job. That's actually fantastic advice. Great advice. I love that advice. I I actually just told one of my patients the other day because they were complaining about how doctors are. And I said, I agree. Doctors, sometimes they're inpatient, whatever it is. But I was like, sometimes it starts with you guys. Because I can be a doctor, give you everything, spend two hours a day, every day, doing everything I can. One day you call, you want to be seen. I say no. You go online, write a bad review, find something to sue me. And now yeah. I went from the happiest doctor in the world to like, what is the point of being super nice to everybody yeah. if it, within one second you call and I can't see you or if I'm on vacation one day, you're going to go write a bad review. And yep. Yep. So that's what I told them. I'm like, if you want change in doctors, it has to be starting with you guys too. Exactly. Yeah. Because when you're nice to the doctor and you're not trying to sue them all the time and not trying to write bad reviews and all of that, keep them nice. Because when we leave residency, we're happy. We're yeah. excited to see everybody. It's the patients that change us into angry people and i'm not blaming them i'm just saying it's both sides it's not just the doctors the patients play a big role in this yeah they have to they have to you have to work care about yourself more than anybody else cares about your body and your health right don't don't expect to smoke eat whatever you want drink whatever you want and expect us to fix it with with a pill you know what i'm saying if you're not worried about your health I should not be worried about your health no. more than you should be worried about your health. Simple as that. And okay. be respectful, man. I had a patient came in for shortness of breath today. I, I could literally see her in my car. She smoked five cigarettes. I'm not exaggerating. Five cigarettes came in, smelled like thing. You're never controlling my, I'm always short of breath. You never yeah. do anything for me. I'm like, I just saw you folk smoke five cigarettes in your car. She's like, yeah. Well, then help me quit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> help you quit. Then. Like, we offer everything, but you de- de- decline everything. Everything. Like, what you want so it's to like, do, right? you got to make changes first. Um, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Thank awesome. you so much for coming on. Michelle, we thank really you appreciate so much. You. Is there anything the else advice. you, you want to you say? No, not at all. I think we'll we hit on everything. On, so, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. Awesome. Thank I appreciate you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Awesome.